Promising male birth control pill has its origin in an arrow poison. What? Wow. This is the plant. So you're touching it right now, so it's not like poisonous to the touch. Uh, you should wash your hands, yeah. Why are you working on this? If I can help and be the mother of the male contraceptive, wouldn't that be a great thing? We have had female birth control options for a long time. First we had the diaphragm, and then in the 1960s we got the pill. Since then we've had the IUD, the patch, the ring, the shot. But what about for guys? Well, there's condoms and then there's vasectomies. Medical researchers are working to change that and we're gonna meet one of them. Dr. Gunda Georg is the head of the Department of Medicinal Chemistry here at the University of Minnesota. Let's go see what she's working on. Tell me about this agent that you're working on now. Uh, this particular wabain, it's called, this natural product from this African plant, uh, actually prevents a sperm from swimming. So rats were given orally uh, this uh, modified <laughs> compound and uh, we could show that their sperm motility was greatly reduced. And so if you reduce, uh, I guess, the ability of the sperm to get to the egg and penetrate the egg, then you have a contraceptive agent. Have you seen the plant? No, I have not. <laughs> You're like, just give it to me in the powder form so I can yeah, work by so magic. Obviously, I looked, uh, looked it up right on the internet. And then, of course, you, you can see it. it's actually a pretty good looking plant, I think. There are actually two plants that produce a wabane, the poison arrow plant and the climbing oleander, the one that Dr. Georg's team is working with. So the extract from a poisonous plant may be the secret to the first male birth control pill. I've got to know more about this plant. We're here at the Atlanta Botanical Garden to meet a guy named Paul Blackmore. He is the conservatory manager here and he knows all about the climbing oleander plant. Let's go meet him. Okay, so the climbing oleander plant is a dark and sinister plant. It's very beautiful, like most beautiful things, it has a dark side and it comes from Central uh, Africa, Congo, Cameroon, Nigeria, down all the way down to Equatorial Guinea. It grows in the forest, uh, it will reach the top of the forest and it will produce a fantastic um, highly perfumed purple flower. And you have that plant here? Yeah, we have it here. And you do want to be careful. <laughs> you do not want to get the sap on your skin or in your face. Okay. Yeah? If you get the sap in, in your eyes or on your lips, then you stand a reasonable chance of getting contaminated and have some effects. It's not likely that it's going to kill you because the poison's derived from grinding the seeds and stems into a liquid that's then rendered down over a fire to make a black pitch. This is painted onto arrows, darts and other weapons. If it gets into your blood, it uh, disorganizes your management of calcium and sodium and it will shut your cells down and attack your heart. And it is a, a swift and unpleasant demise, <laughs> unfortunately. So wabane, which comes from the plant, yep. is something that can stop your heart, but it can also stop sperm from swimming. That's right. And so how do we make sure that we're stopping the sperm from swimming and not stopping people's hearts? We uh, changed the chemical structure, modify it in a way that it has no longer heart toxicity. So Dr. Saida, what is that? It's a oabane. That's the oabane in this little vial that comes from the plant. And we see like a skull and crossbones. This is the modified version of the compound that's found in the plant. But okay. we have to go through nine steps, right? Yeah. Nine, nine, nine different chemical steps to get it to get to the final product. <laughs> Dr. Georg and Dr. Saida aren't the only researchers working on bringing a male birth control to market. There are other pills, gels, and injections all being developed. It's 2018. Why do we not have a male birth control pill yet? You have a number of issues. First of all, it has to be completely effective, as effective as the female uh, birth control pill. 
it has to be completely free of side effects because you know you're healthy and you don't want to take something that's going to damage you in one way or another. Dr. Georg says the reason why side effects are tolerated in female birth control as opposed to men's is because pregnancy is a medical condition and it can be potentially life-threatening and come with other health consequences for women. The same can't be said for men. Then we also have the issue of reversibility. You know, if you have planned to have children at a later time, we have to make absolutely sure that there was no effect uh, for, uh, you know, the offspring. As with many poisonous plants, in small amounts it's used as medicine. Okay. It's traditionally used as medicine to treat gonorrhea, heartburn and stomach upsets. So what did you think when you heard that this plant that you study and know very well is now being developed potentially into a male birth control pill? I was like, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Plants and people have always and continue to have a dependence on each other. You could talk about, okay, the forest creates the oxygen and fresh water, that's one thing. But what about aspirin from willow? Yeah, what about the rubber on your shoes and the rubber tree? So whatever we do, we can't get away from it and uh, we will always depend on plants. That's what the story of this room is. This room is the orangery, but I prefer to call it the room of uh, murder, magic, mystery and medicine, yeah? Are guys going to be willing to take birth control pills? Yeah, I would say um, they will. There was a worldwide survey done a number of years ago. Over 50% of the men said they would be willing. And as a matter of fact, I sometimes get emails from men who say, you know, I want to be the guinea pig. So I think there's a lot of <laughs> more acceptance out there than uh, some people uh, think. How long do you think it will take for this to come to market if it does come to market? You know, the answer with these kinds of things is always 10 years. And we hope that companies will step forward, but uh, right now there is really no interest, I would say. But I'm optimistic for the future. I think if there is something available, they will actually uh, uh, take it. And I think it's also up to couples then to negotiate. You know, right now there's no negotiating, right? It's The burden is more or less on the woman. This would have a huge impact on society. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Game changer.